Hi, and welcome to Edwards Motorhomes. Today, we're going to do a handover video for you on this 2020 plated Autotrail V Line 635 Sport. Really hope you find it informative. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start on the outside of the vehicle and we're going to work our way in. So we're going to start off with the vehicle key. Press the button at the top, ignition key comes out. Top button, that will unlock your cab doors. Bottom button, will unlock your habitation door and your boot. Middle button, locks everything. So we're going to open it all back up, because what we want to do to start off with is look inside the passenger door, where just here, we have your bonnet release. Underneath the passenger seat, we have your toolkit. Electric step, just here. And of course, we have the switch, just there. This awning light works just off that switch. Fresh water filler, just there. And you fill up your LPG tank, just here. Now, your LPG tank is situated underneath the vehicle. Now, if you've never filled one of these before, you'll notice you've got two prongs just there. Now, what you'll do is you'll fit it on, you'll lock it into place. You'll fill it up like you're filling up with normal diesel. The one thing you do have to remember is when you release the pressure, there will be a small amount of gas that's in there and it will, boom, straight up in the air and it will frighten the life out of you the first time you do it. But that is par for the course. Now, on the actual tank itself, there is an isolator switch which is underneath the vehicle. Now, the next thing, of course, is obviously in the back, you've got these three windows that go around your lounge area. This window, something very, very important. If you've got this window open, be very careful of your habitation door because you can do that and smash your window. So always be aware that window must be shut if you're opening your habitation door. Next, we come around to the rear of the vehicle. Now, this particular vehicle has had a tow bar fitted just here. Again, great for bike racks because obviously you can't fit anything onto the back panel. Reversing camera at the top. To open it up, just from here. Now, inside of here, you will have your tripod leg and you'll have the smaller table leg, so it means you can use your tables outside of the van. Just here is the release the boot now if for any reason you lose your power you can actually get to it from inside so you can come through pull that you do need somebody pressing the button on the outside as well to get into your boot area also down here we will come through to this later on but that is your boiler drain and your gas barbecue point you also have access back into the van just there so again you've got a hatch if you've got any long loads that need to go through pop them straight through there Coming around this side, we have the flue for your heating, just here, and your fridge vents here and here. Here, we have your fresh water drain and your waste water drain. And here we have your cassette toilet. Now, if you've never used a cassette toilet before, the first thing you have to remember is on the toilet itself, which we'll come to later on, there is a grey handle underneath the toilet. Now, to open and close that, you will open and close the blade on the top. Now, for obvious reasons, the blade must be closed when you want to take out your cassette. And what you do, you just lift there and pull it out. Now, every campsite should have what they call an Alson point. You take your handle out, you wheel this to the Alson point. When you get there, take the cap off, you press the orange button at the back, and you flush away. Now, the orange button, that will allow air to flow into it. It's not going to glug out all over the place. Once you've drained it down, flush through, add new chemical. That then pops back inside. Job done. Here, we have your outdoor shower point. And here, we have your electric point. Now, it is very important when you hook up just to press that down when you are releasing. The only other thing I really want to show you here is, again, going back to the underslung gas tank. Here is the LEDs, which will show you how much gas you've got in your system. Let's take a look inside. So now we come to your cab. So we'll start on the driver's door and we'll work our way across. 
So just here, you will see that you've got the controls for your wing mirrors. Now, you've got four settings there because you've got four mirrors. You've got your main mirrors and you've got your blind spot mirrors at the bottom. Now you literally click this over to which one you want and then you just use the joystick to move it in which direction. When you've got it in the right place, click it back up to the top so if you nudge it accidentally, it won't move. Just here, you've got your electric windows and here, of course, to lock your cab doors. Over on here, you've got your mode button just there. Now, your mode button, that will give you different options that will pop up here for date and time and that sort of thing. You can also turn off your passenger airbag from here. Steering wheel, which of course, you've got your telephone controls on this side, radio controls on this side, wash wipes, indicators and headlights, and cruise control. Nine speed gearbox. Here we have your tablet or phone holder. Pop up, unclip, pop your phone or your tablet in there. You can then Bluetooth this through into the media center, or you do have the controls there just to be able to plug it in. When you finish with this, clip them back in, or as a moment to pop that one back in, or you can damage it when you're pushing it back down. While we're over here, of course, this is also your cool box. Now, if you've got your cab air conditioning on, got to keep it lovely and cool in there. Media center. Now, the first thing to tell you about the media center, of course, is that you can turn this on when there's no ignition on. That's fine, but you do have to remember to make sure it's physically off when you get out of the van. Otherwise, you could leave it for a few days and before you've realized it, you've just drained your battery completely down. So, when we've got it turned on, this is your first screen where you've got your navigation, your camera, which you can have running while you're actually traveling, your FM tuner, your DAB. We scroll through. Again, your Bluetooth controls, your settings, your USBs. Just here, again, you do have a demo with the system. Now, it's definitely worth going through that because it'll show you how everything works. Like I say, make sure you press the button and turn it off. Then, of course, here we have your heater controls and we've got your cab air conditioning. Hazard warning lights to lock or unlock your doors. And that one there is for your heated mirrors. USB charger and 12 volt charger just here. Then we have your Remis cab blinds. Now, your Remis cab blinds, they are good, but they are very sensitive. So you pinch and slide out. Now, the temptation is to do this, but you want to keep this as straight as possible. Come across, and it will magnetically lock on just there. When you bring it back, keep it straight, tuck it at the bottom, and then clip in. Same with the windscreen. You pinch either side. bring it across and the magnet will lock on now if you've got a hairband or you've got an elastic band best to put it around there because sometimes you get somewhere very late of an evening if it's dark you might not notice it might not be sealed all the way up and of course that can happen when you start moving around it can be a little bit embarrassing the other thing of course is remember to make sure these clip back in properly or you will end up turning a corner and that will shoot across in front of your face then we have your cab seats. Now, they're both completely adjustable. Now, if we have a look at the passenger side just here, you'll see you've got these two catches. Now, that means that the seat works on a rocker system. So if we use the front one, it'll bring the front of the seat up or down. Do the back, exactly the same again. You also have the wheel there for the backrests. You also have the wheels on your armrest. So again, you can get those into the right position. Just here, we have the catch to swivel the seats. So you pull away from yourself and then you shift your bum round and it will spin you around. Now, the beauty of this area, of course, is it does give you a separate smaller lounge area at the front. So next we come to tables. Now you do have two options with the V-Line 635 Sport. You've got this point just here where you can use a coffee table. In the rear, which we'll come to in a second, you can use your larger dining table. Now, what you've got in the wardrobe is this pole. If we take the grommet out the floor just here, the pole slots in there. We then take your smaller table out of the wardrobe. Slot that on there and you've got your coffee table at the front. Now, we can use this table obviously in the back, you do have a choice, but again, more often than not, you'll probably use the larger dining table. So again, it works in the same process. We put this one back. We take the table leg. 
we take the grommet out of the floor here pop that one in then the larger table lives behind the driver's seat just here the catch on the wall this then slides out that fits on there now you'll remember when we were talking in the booth we do have the desmo table leg which is the tripod foot that will sit on the bottom of this leg which means you can use either of these tables outside of the van as well as inside your bed makeup is very simple now how it works is you literally just slide this piece out to the center same on this side you then pull these out backrests go down exactly the same now personally i would turn these over because it's going to give you more of an even wear also you tend to find they are flatter on the other side but again very easy to make up it is literally a 30 second job so here we have your 12 volt control panel first of all your on off switch just here this one here gives you your rear lights and this one your outside awning lights water pump and your levels so if you keep it pressing on that one again you can select your battery it'll tell you your temperature and humidity you can adjust the hour and the minute by that button just there and then it'll bring you back round again it will show you what your leisure battery is charging at the moment your vehicle battery and it'll also tell you the quality whether it's good average or poor fresh and wastewater tank levels and back around to batteries for that heating and hot water is supplied by the truma system just here so to start off with we turn it on now you've got four icons at the top we want to go to the third icon first of all because what we want to do is pick our heat source so you press on there and you have a choice gas mix one mix two electric one or electric two okay so Gas is obvious, you're running on gas. Electric, one and electric two is one electric element or two electric elements. Mix one and mix two, again, is gas and one electric element or two electric elements. Now, we're in the showroom here at the moment, so we'll be fine on electric two. Now, it really does depend with one electric element or two electric elements where you actually are, because it'll depend on which power they've got coming through the system if it will power two electric elements. So once we've set our heat source, the next thing we do is set our temperature. So now we come back to the first icon, press the button, and then we literally choose what heat we want. So let's say we want 20 degrees, and then press the button. Now, it will only kick in if we drop below 20 degrees. So you're not using electrical gas you don't need to be using. So the next we're going to come to is the fan, which is the fourth icon. If we press on there now, it will give us a choice of eco or high. And that is literally how much air you're going to be pushing through your vents. Then we'll come to your hot water. Now, the first thing I have to tell you obviously with your hot water is one, you need to make sure that you've got your switch down on your boiler and then you have to put your water pump on and it'll make a gurgling noise until the boiler is actually full. I know it's obvious, but you can't heat water that isn't there. So you must make sure your boiler's filled up first. When you do that, you then come to this second icon, press the button and you have a choice. Eco, which is 40 degrees or hot, which is 60. And then you have boost. Boost is really there if one of you has had a shower and the other one wants to have a shower not long after. Pop it on boost and it'll heat your hot water quicker. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the heating for a second. So we'll take that back down to off. And now we're going to come back to your fan. If we press on there now, you'll see we have a choice of vent. And that will take us all the way up to number 10. Basically, that means you don't have to have your heating on. If you just want to circulate the air around in the van, you can via your vent system. Now, if we come down to the bottom, just here, if we press on there, this will then give us the option of being able to set the timing to come on at a particular time. So again, if you get up at, say, 7 o'clock, you want to set your heating to come on at 6, you do that from here. Next one is your clock. So we press on there, and you just scroll around for the time. Once you've got it, you press on. Same with your minutes press again 
You'll see just here, we've got a little plug icon. That's telling us that we are plugged into the mains at the moment. And then we come to your settings. Now, if we press on there, first thing you can do is you can offset your screen. Why you'd want to offset your screen, I'm not really quite sure, but you can. Temperature, you can change from degrees to Fahrenheit. Brightness on your control panel. 12 or 24 hour clock. Language, if this is all a little bit too simple for you, you want to do it in French, German or Italian, fill your boots. Index, I'll come back to in a second. And reset. Sometimes if you pick up a glitch in your system, you can hit reset and it'll take it back to factory settings. So, index. If you have a problem with your system, or you've done something wrong, what will happen is a warning triangle will come up on here. If you press on the warning triangle, it will then give you a code which will be stored in your index. Now, the idea behind this is, these codes will be on the Truma website, but also you could call into your garage, they will have a list of these, so they'd have a, probably a very good idea of what was going on before you've even brought the van in just by the codes. A lot of the time it will be something simple. For argument's sake, you've put it on electric, but you haven't plugged it into the mains, or you've put it on for gas and you haven't turned your gas on. If that happens, it can take up to 15 minutes for the warning triangle to reset. It's just something to bear in mind. Next, we come to your kitchen. Now, the first thing to tell you about, of course, is we have a habitation fly screen here. Now, when this door's open, that will pull right the way across. Also, of course, you do have an opening window here. We'll come on to windows and blinds in a moment. But again, you do have a blind at the bottom and a fly screen at the top. Here, we have an extra slab of work surface. Now, to get this open, you give it a tap at the bottom and that will lock up just there. Now, you'll also notice there's an extra 230 volt socket just down here. To release this, unclip, drop that back down and push it back into place. Then of course we have your sink, that just lifts up and you've got the mixer tap will come across. Obviously remember to pull that back out the way when you're dropping down the lid. Here we have this underslung light just there and in here of course we've got all this storage space. Now you will also notice underneath here you have your gas isolator switches. Microwave. Now the microwave, of course, will only work if you're plugged into the mains on 230 volt. And just in there, we have the socket for it. Then, of course, we have your cutlery drawer just here and all your storage going right the way down. Underneath the oven, just here, you will see that we also have your water pump just in there. And, of course, your oven is a gas oven, so you must have your gas turned on for that to work. Then we have your three-way fridge freezer. So if you've never used a three-way before, it does what it pretty much what you'd expect. This button here will turn it on. And then you have these three choices. Electric if you're plugged into the mains, gas if you're running out of gas, and battery. Now battery is one that tends to confuse because you would assume that battery means leisure battery. It doesn't, it means vehicle battery, which means the engine must be running before you turn that on. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is, that's gonna start flashing and bleeping at you and telling you you've got a fault. Pressing that button there, will just change your temperature and you just pop your two fingers in there to open up your fridge. And there we have your kitchen. So next we come to your wet room and your toilet. So the first thing is just in here, we have the storage area behind this mirror. You press, it opens up, and then you've got a decent amount of storage just back there. Clip that back in, press there, and your sink drops down, tap pops across. Now, when we were outside the van, we were talking about the cassette toilet. Now, the first thing is obviously, your toilet bowl does swivel around so you can get into the most comfortable position. Now, the blade, you can see at the moment, is closed just there. Now, the grey handle here, that one will open it, push it back it will close the only reason you want that open is if you're using the toilet apart from that keep it closed you do need your water pump on obviously if you're going to flush the toilet and you flush the toilet with that blue button just there and again if your cassette's full you will have a light come on there now with your shower you've got your temperature controls just here and obviously the flow and on top of the shower you'll see there is a little button just there and you press that obviously for your water to come out Something else that is very important, of course, is you do have a shower curtain. You do need to bring this around so you don't get the toilet wet and you don't get everything else wet in here at the same time. So next we're going to come to your fuses in your sergeant control panel. Now, if you look 
down here just behind the driver's seat you'll see you've got some of your fuses situated there and it will tell you what they're for then we're going to come through to the back of the van now just underneath this bench seat just here we have your sergeant the control panel now here of course you can see you've got your main 12 volt shutdown just there heater and charge it now those if they're both when you're on electric i wouldn't bother pressing the switches because if you're not on electric they won't come on anyway then of course we have your extra fuses just here and your trip switches just here now if we look underneath this bench you will also see that we have your boiler just there and on the opposite side underneath this bench we have your leisure battery and of course some more extra storage next we're going to come to your tv and your solar panel so in this cupboard here we have your solar controller now you do have a choice whether you want to be charging up your vehicle battery or your leisure battery and it just works off this switch just here so again you can have the control you can pick what you want to be charging and then next we come to your tv now in this cupboard just here you'll see you have your booster now you can change your booster you can go from minimum to maximum boost why you would want minimum boost i really couldn't tell you but you can now again if you're wild camping you might want to just flick that off so again you're not draining down on your leisure battery but we want to be actually tuning this in so we'll press the button just there next is your television now underneath here you'll have a light come on when it's on standby now at the moment you can see it's off because we haven't turned the television on and on the side just here you have a gray button if we press that we'll now have a red light now using the remote control you press your standby button just there if you can get on the right angle and then that will turn blue now we're in the showroom at the moment so we might not get a great signal but how you tune these things in is literally once this comes through we want to press the setup button just here there we go now once we press the setup button we want to now come down to this satellite so we'll just press down so we come to the satellite push across and we want to come down to auto search once we press on there, it will ask us the country. We are in the UK, so we'll press OK. Now that's going to search through. Now, once it actually finds its signal, because it is an omnidirectional aerial, it will then put all those channels in. Now, it really does depend on where you are on what type of signal you're going to get. In all fairness, if you've got an 85 centimetre satellite dish on the roof, if you park next to a tree, you're not really going to get any reception. So it really does depend on where you are. The other thing, of course, with the omnidirectional area is you will need to retune when you move into another area. So next we're going to come to your windows, your skylights, your blinds and your fly screens. First thing is when you are traveling, your windows and your skylights must be closed. They're fantastic. They're double glazed, but they're plastic. If they catch the wind, they will be gone. So if we start off with your skylight just here, press the button in and release. Now you'll see you've got these two notches here. So again, you can have it at different heights just there. Now fly screen will come across from this side and blind from this. Then we come to your windows. Now on your windows, you can see you've got these little buttons on the catches. So you just press those in and then push up and you just turn with these either side. And then of course your windows stay open. When you bring it back down just unscrew and bring it down now you will see you can have them slightly open by just clipping into place on the first lock to lock them bring them back to the second lock and again you've got your fly screen at the top blind at the bottom this does mean you can have your windows open but if you still want some privacy but you've got your fly screen just there so the midges and things can't come back in so they do clip together one thing i would advise you as well is a lot of people have got a thing about when they're not using the van leaving the blinds or the fly screens down that's fine but what you will find is these are like a concertina and they will give out all integrity if they're left in the same position like this for too long a period next we're going to come to your water system in a little bit more detail now the first thing is going to be priming your system first thing you need to do when you prime your system is this switch just here now this is your boiler drain. Now at the moment it's up in the air, which means the boiler is open. If we fill the water into the fresh water tank and put on the water pump, all that's gonna happen is it's gonna go through the boiler and drain straight down on the floor. So what we wanna do, flick this switch down. We've now sealed your boiler. Next thing we're gonna go back into the van. So if you'd like to follow me.
We've now sealed your boiler. So the next thing we would do would be again on the outside, you would make sure that your fresh water tank is sealed with the two drain downs that we saw outside earlier. Once you've got that sealed, that's fine. You can now fill up your fresh water tank. Once you've done that, you want to open up all your taps in the vehicle. Obviously, make sure that you put them over the sinks. And next, you're going to turn on your water pump. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to cough and splutter at you for a few minutes because what's going to happen is the water is going to be purging through the system. It's going to be releasing the air. Once it all starts flowing through, you find you can knock off your taps, you can knock off your water pump, you've primed your system. Now we're going to come to draining it down. Now, obviously, especially come the winter months, you don't want water left in your system if you're going to have frost. First thing to do is to go back outside and what you're going to do is you're going to open up your wastewater tap and your freshwater tap and you're going to drain down your tanks. Next, we're going to go back to that boiler switch and we're going to flick that up in the air and we're going to drain down your boiler. And again, what we want to do is open up all the taps inside and put on your water pump so it will get all the last bits of water out of your pipes. Now, I would usually say don't put your water pump on if you've got no water in your system. But just for a few seconds, let it get those last few bits out. So again, you're not going to leave any water in there. If you do have a flash frost, it's not going to cause you any problems. So next, we're going to come to your awning. First thing to remember when you take out your awning, habitation door must be closed. Or you're going to start to wind this out and it's just going to catch on top of the door. So we we'll pull this closed. Next thing is you wind the handle. Now you'll notice just here, there's some screws. And then we can extend the length. Now with me being only short, I need that quite long. And what we do, these two pins just here will lock in just there. And then you turn. Now the manufacturers will say to you that you want to bring this out about halfway and then drop the legs down and inch it through. That's fine, but again, if you're a bit vertically challenged like myself, it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. So I am going to be taking this one pretty much fully out. Works easier as a two-person operation because you can get somebody just obviously taking the weight. Now, the other thing to bear in mind with these awnings are they are sun awnings. If the weather's bad, get them in. I've seen some terrible damage that's been caused when people have left awnings out, they catch the wind, and they can come up onto your roof and cause a lot of problems. Next thing, of course, is your legs, which are spring-loaded in here. So you just push back and drop down. I'm going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to push it up. Now, make sure that, obviously, you've got the foot flat. And then you've got these little catches just here. Now, they are quite stiff in the middle. You need to push up. It will feel like it doesn't really want to go, but they will go. Same on this side. Okay, make sure your foot's flat. Now you can get storm straps. And you can make it so it's a bit more secure, but again, like I say, my advice would be, if the weather's bad, always get it in. So, thank you for watching our handover video on this Auto Trail V-Line 635 Sport. Really hope you found it informative. If you have enjoyed this video, we've got a lot of other handover videos and reviews on motorhomes. Now you'll notice there's a little button just down there for subscribe. If you'd like to press that, you'll get our whole back catalogue. And of course, always give us a like if you found this useful. Thank you very much.